Brazil, we had members that came from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and they adopt. They still had held that view, and we had to talk through them. They're like, "Oh, we know this is not for salvation, but we still have to obey these regulations."、Mm, okay. And, and then I'm like, "Well, if that's the case, then your life is going to get a whole lot harder because what you're wearing doesn't fit in with the Levitical code, you know, because it's mixed fabrics." Hey everyone! Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Today I've got Emil.、Um, Emil. Emil. I've got Abraham with me. How you doing, Abraham? Emil in transformed form. It transformed form <laughs> without the hat. How you been, bro?、Uh, I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good man. Good. good, good. It's good to have you more in our videos because、mm. I know we've been doing a lot of videos, like me and Emil, just、mm. both of us, and.、Um, We're we're pretty happy to have you over. It's such a blessing for us. Yeah, man, it's a blessing for me too. And we, we'll we'll make it more of a common thing as well. I'll come up more often. And, yeah, yeah, because、yeah, you have to drive what around two hours to get here. Yeah, something、right. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So、right. dedication, dedication. For our ten viewers, it's a dis. It's <laughs> worth it. Ah,、oh, such a blessing. Um, what are we talking about today, man? So one of the things that I think was um.、Uh, An important thing to discuss and maybe to unfold is certain issues about personal convictions in the church. And、um, it was something that was on my heart for a few weeks. There's a lot of Christians within the church community that they have a lot of disagreements about non-essential things.、Cool. So we're not talking about you know salvation. We're not talking about the essentials of doctrine. But when they start disagreeing about the smaller Minute things about you know, you know what kind of things they should eat, or you know whether they should you know watch TV, or whether they should drink alcohol, that kind of thing. Oh、yeah. man, you actually touch a sensitive topic there.、Yeah. What they what should they eat? Yeah, what should they? Yeah, they, that, uh, that's a trending thing too now. I yeah,、know. I remember a few people. That was a long time ago, by the way, guys. Um, I, I think it still happens that it really depends if you meet these kind of people or not. They were trying to justify. Why God didn't create us to eat meat? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. have that in the in the Christian community now, more of a growing movement,、um, especially with the you know the Seventh Day Adventist、yeah. kind of、um, background people in that background where they don't a lot of them in certain sects and certain forms of it they don't eat meat and they don't eat certain things、um, because of that conviction, right? Um, that they believe that it wasn't in God's original design, it wasn't in God's original plan that we eat meat and that we murder, and so they consider it murder. So when some of these people become Christians, it becomes bearing on their conscience, and they're like, when they eat meat, they feel like they're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. well, to be honest with you, I never feel wrong about eating meat. So <laughs> I really enjoy my bacon, steak, yeah. and yeah, everything else that goes with it. Yeah. yeah.、Um, <laughs> But jokes aside,、um, I've even seen people go as far as not only that it was God's plan for Adam and Eve to stay vegetarians, but also it was Jesus that was a vegetarian too. Or is it vegan vegetarian? I don't know the difference because I'm neither. <laughs> so it's yeah, that's a that's a pretty、uh, that's I know it was a stretch, and I'm thinking, that's a stretch of an argument there. Why would you go that far? Because For Jews, they would have to practice the Passover. Yeah, and he had the Passover meal with his disciples, and that's you know that's a whole lamb. Unless lamb is not meat. Ah,、uh, um, oh, unless you know they do these <laughs> vegan patties that taste like meat, <laughs> and, and you think like、uh, no. oh you know we're eating lamb, but yeah, they're just eating、yeah. some God knows what. I think this is one of the things where we have to be careful.、Um, not putting our own worldview and interpreting the Bible through it. So whether you're a meat eater or not, you shouldn't be reading the Bible through your own lens. If it's a personal conviction, that's fine. That's between you and God. But then, reading the Bible through that lens can be a dangerous thing because you start to alter everything. And then, what ends up happening is starts to become a command for everyone. And that's how disagreements and disunity starts to occur in that in the church or in the body, because then you like. You say, "Well, I have this personal conviction; therefore, you all must abide by that conviction,、mm. even though 
there's nothing in the word of God to say blank yes or no that this is wrong or this is right. You yeah. Know? So I I think even Paul speaks a lot about this. Um, he's speaking about that we do have liberty. Yeah. Yeah. To, to enjoy all things, but sometimes things things that we are free to do might not be beneficial for our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And he brings a good example in First Corinthians. He's saying, if eating meat causes my brother to sin, I won't ever then eat meat again. I won't eat meat. Would you ever, uh, could you ever say that? Well, well, the way I would see that verse is that in the presence of that person, yeah. right? Because yeah. that person might have a lot of weaknesses. Doesn't mean you're going to be altering to every mm -hmm. single thing. And you're going to apply that for all of your life, mm -hmm. right? So I think like if I'm going to go, I don't know, say if, if I'm going to go to, to Middle East, right? And you, you might come to a person who might be from a Muslim background, mm -hmm. right? Became a Christian, he's new in the faith. Um, I, I don't need to sit down and eat bacon in front of them. Yeah. Right? So, or alcohol or, or anything that would, yeah. Yeah. So, so I would mind that weakness, mm -hmm. you know, I, because people grow in their faith as well. Of course. Of we course. can't just assume just because a person ha has that world view doesn't mean that he's going to continue. Yeah. 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 There's a, there's, a, there's a form of ignorance, especially when you're a novice and when you're growing in the faith, you're a newborn. And Paul talks about this in Romans 14. He says in Romans 14, I know, and he knows, he's, he has that assurance, his theology was on point, right? He says, I know none of this. I know that there is freedom to do all things and mm. to to have the freedom to eat what I want and to worship when I want because they were having those disagreements. But in the presence of those who have the more, who, who have a conscience that is more sensitive to those things and who have those personal convictions, I can actually hurt them with mm. my approach and with my liberty. It's kind of like I'm provoking them to sin in a way because he says, if it's in their mind as a personal conviction, when they do it, they are sinning, right? Because they're sinning against their mind, mm -hmm. right? So we have to have the sensitivity to walk alongside our weaker brothers. So that's the way he uses it. He says people who have the stronger conviction in these things, they're the weaker brother, right? Yeah. The stronger brother is the one who knows how to live in liberty. Yes. You know, they know how that balance that it's good to eat. It's good to, you know, to, to drink and to eat and to worship how you want. That's a good thing. That liberty is there, but not at the expense of my brother's walk in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting because, um, a lot of times as you, as you're speaking, I'm starting to get some of my previous experience when, when I encounter people like that, I've had a person come to me. And bring out Romans says, you know, the Bible calls you to, you know, accommodate for the weakness mm. of my conscience. Yeah. Yeah. I said, that's not a problem, but you just admitted yourself mm. that you are weak that you're in the your weak conscience. One. You're the weak one here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. instead of you living in weakness and expecting everybody else to accommodate, to accommodate you, you yeah. Why don't you live that freedom that you have in Christ? Or, or yeah, or work at growing and becoming yeah. stronger. Yeah. Like Jesus said, he says, look, it's not what you put into your mouth that mm. makes you unclean, right? Yeah. What you eat goes into your stomach and it goes to waste. But then what comes out of your mouth, th that can either justify you or condemn you. Amen. There is that thing that if you speak, it comes from the heart. Mm. It's not coming from the stomach. Yeah. But yeah. when you eat, it goes into the stomach. So there is the heart is what represents our moral state, mm. right? It just really shows what the tree that is inside, yeah. what is bearing fruit when we speak. Yeah. So it's I think it's very important, guys, that yes, we accommodate for the weakness of our brothers and sisters. But at the same time, we don't want our brothers and sisters to continue in their weaknesses. No. As Christians, and that's not only for food, everything else around us, mm. we want to grow in our freedom in Christ. Yeah. It's part of that discipleship, yeah. you would say. You know, 
because this happened in the early church. You know, when the early church was beginning, you had the Jews and the Gentiles together, and they're trying to figure out how do we keep the unity in the church, in the body of Christ, between the Jews and the Gentiles? How do we keep this unity here, right? When, you know, for the Jews, they have a stricter kind of conviction about things that they eat or, or things that are sacrificed to idols and that kind of thing. So they came up with these four rules, right? And they said, all right, just abstain from <clears throat> meat that's offered to idols and, and from blood and yeah. from these things, right? That was James' letter. Yeah, James' letter. Yeah. Right? In, it, in the book of Acts. So, yeah. so if you're going to go letter, to yeah. the book of James and fight, trying to find out there, it's not there. Yeah. So James, who was the, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, he, yeah. he sends out this letter. He's like, all right, abstain from these things. This will help to keep unity. But then in Romans chapter 14 and in verse uh, 1 Corinthians 8, Paul's talking about eating meat from idols being nothing, mm. right? So obviously there's been this evolution and from that ignorance. They've yeah. grown in their liberty, right? Even 1 Corinthians um, speaks about that whatever mm -hmm. is placed in front of you eat it. with thanksgiving, yeah. eat it, yeah. you, you yeah. can eat that. Yeah. Um, I think that's very important. Well, let's go a bit further because I think um, in, in speaking about that, there's a very small group, but there's a larger group that speaks about you can eat meat, but you got to follow the diet um, standard of the Old Testament, right? Oh, right, like the Levitical code. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. You can't eat bacon. Mm. And, and sometimes they try and justify it in the sense that I know we're not under the law, yeah. but it's more beneficial for you. Yeah, I've had I've had people like that in in a... Um... In Brazil, we had members that came from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and they adopt. They still had held that view, and we had to talk through them. They're like, "Oh, we know this is not for salvation, but we still have to obey these regulations." Mm. Okay. And, and then I'm like, "Well, if that's the case, then your life is going to get a whole lot harder because what you're wearing doesn't fit in with the Levitical code, you know, because it's mixed fabrics." And yes. like, you just have to take it to the next conclusion. And then you have to kind of disciple them in the word to understand that this was for the Jewish people as a form of constitution for them. And that the, that Christ has come to fulfill it completely. Yeah. You know? And so what we see in the old Testament bears witness to who Christ is and his forecoming, like as a, as a preparation for his coming and that he now fulfills it. He is the perfect man, both in word and deed. And now we are in a new covenant, right? So when Christ says that this is the blood of the new covenant, he wasn't being, he wasn't mucking around here. He's like, this is a new covenant, right? The old has passed, the new has come. Right? Yeah, that's a blessing. And also, I think if you look at the Old Testament, you actually see that God changing the diet of man few times. Yeah. Because sometimes Christians um, might have this view on the service that God has a certain uh, diet for the Old Testament guys and a new diet for the New Testament mm. guys. And that's not true. Adam and Eve, they were just eating from the fruit of the ground. Mm. <clears throat> you get to Genesis 9, God says to Noah, you could eat of everything yeah. all the animals that's are right. in front of you that's right yeah and then when god establishes israel and he starts to give them a certain um boundaries as to what they can eat from the animal kingdom mm. but then in the new testament we go back to what we have as free mm -hmm. like what you start with noah with noah yeah. you know right. that everything that you eat is okay yeah um as long as you practice your freedom not in the way that you can hurt someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something very important. Um, we would actually love to um, hear your opinion on this. Yeah. Let, let us know what your conviction is. Do you, Are you the type of person that might be just fruits and vegetable guy? Uh, are you the type of person that be like, you know what? Um, I know I can eat everything, but I still want to stick to the Old Testament rules. Or are you the type of person say, I'm not under the law. I have my freedom in Christ and I'm going to enjoy that to the fullest, yeah. which I am in that group. And I think, <laughs> so here's the issue. You can, you can have those modes though. You can have those personal convictions. Mm -hmm. The issue that Paul was speaking about in Romans 14 and first Corinthians eight and, 
you know, even in the book of Acts with the with those laws or with those um, suggestions and those recommendations that we keep the unity. Yeah. Even in spite of your disagreements and your differences in those things, right? So if you have your brother or sister who lives fairly differently to your convictions, your personal convictions, you should still be able to, you know, commune with them and have fellowship with them and not bear resentment or anger or judgment against them in that sense. Yeah. So this is the the whole point. It's like, Yes, let's discuss it. We can talk about it, but let's not bear resentment. Let's keep the unity here. It's not a reason for us to divide. There are reasons we should divide. That is with doctrine, you know, when it comes to essential doctrines and with heinous practice of sin, right? Yeah. So those are reasons for division. But this, these personal yeah. convictions, it's not. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, normally, as human beings, it's in our nature to push boundaries. Of course. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, like, I'll be like, don't do this, don't do this, yeah, don't yeah, do this, yeah, don't do yeah. this. And we're like, oh, you know, like people try and be like, could I find a yeah, crack in yeah, that yeah, to yeah, push like, it? Yeah. In this, in this topic, God is like, get out of your jail cell mm. and you're free to eat anything yeah. you want. And now and we're the pushing person this. goes back, closes the, the, the door and be like, no, I'm just happy to be here. So psychologically speaking reverse psychology <laughs> yeah it could be but like you know like god saying don't do this sin and mm. people they're like i want to try and be free to do this sin mm. but in this case god is like you're free to eat everything you're yeah. like no yeah. i'll back off i'm gonna yeah. stay in my jail cell why do you think that like why do you think human beings have that tendency to try and restrict their diet as Christians, mm. non-Christians, obviously, everyone has their own standard. Mm. But biblically speaking, like, what's going on? <laughs> it's a tough question. It is oh. a tough question. I think it's multi-layered. Um, because with different people, there might be different circumstances. But I do believe that there might be a form of pride there, you know, okay. in, even in ignorance. So they may not realize it, but there's a bit of a pride because, for example, I grew up and... When I was younger, I made like, you know, I made certain decisions. I'm not going to drink alcohol. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, I want to do that before God. And I'll, I like, I don't think that it's going to be beneficial for me and whatnot. Alcohol is in the Bible. There's nothing to say. You can't drink it. Yeah. Right. So, but I made that decision. You can't get drunk. You yeah. can't get drunk. So like you don't push that boundary. Yeah. You don't get drunk. And we've seen obviously the abuses of that in Christianity where people you know, take their liberty to a sinful, in, into a sinful direction. Like even in drunkers. communion. Yeah, yeah. First Corinthians 11. Where they have, you know, a whole, you know, pint of wine that they're <laughs> drinking. You don't need to do that. Um, but like, so this is one of the things that we, we push the boundary. But Sorry, I, I thought of a joke. You know how like a human body has got like, I think, four liters of blood? Uh -huh. You're like, I need four liters of wine. <laughs> <laughs> all right now i lost Sorry, my track of thought yeah so with with these people who they actually want to place those limitations there can be an element of pride i also think it's an element of lack of trust in god mm. because what happens is sometimes the confinement gives them this sense of security like okay. i'm not going to violate god i'm not going to violate his commandments you know by freedom through mm. freedom but as they grow in God and you realize, you know, the Lord is my shepherd and he's leading me and he's guiding me in the spirit now. So we have the law of the spirit now, right? Yeah. We don't have the law of Moses, right? The law of the spirit leads you and he guides you. And it takes, you know, it's that process of sanctification. It's like sometimes we're going to leave the security blanket away. Ooh, mm -hmm. Like my, my kids, sometimes they have, my daughter has her doll that she has to have every night. But there's nights where... I'll be with her and she puts her doll away. Mm. She doesn't need it to go to sleep, right? Because dad's here. So it's like sometimes for us, we're like when we don't feel the spirit in our life or we don't, when we don't trust that the spirit is guiding us and leading us into truth, we need these little restrictions to kind of keep us in place and to give us a sense of security in God, right? Yeah, and I think in your in your I think in your walk with God, as you're walking with Him, as you're growing with Him, and you understand who He is, and you 
walk in that freedom, you realize you're not violating God, you're not violating his commands, you're actually promoting the things that God promotes as good. You know? so, so in other sense, like, because we have so many boundaries in other areas of our life, mm. we feel like we need to put a boundary here. Yeah. And if we have our freedom to do yeah. what we want yeah. in this side, we feel a bit of conviction. It's as if I'm having my freedom yeah. to break the moral law. Moral, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That's a good discussion, but yeah. we don't have so much. I, I want to talk a bit on the Sabbath. Yeah, uh, this is a, a good you, one, yeah. You, you've got people that um, are very strict to having their service on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And even people will go stricter. That has to be the the Saturday that's in Israel, mm -hmm. like the timeline, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and they would degrade the guys on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like your mark of the beast, you're worshipping the beast. And they would come up with all these background in the Roman Empire as to what Sunday means yeah. and why Sunday changed. And it was all because of the Roman Empire they changed and so on, which is all misinformation, of by course. the way. Yeah. But um, what would you say to that? Again, this, like we said, it's misinformation and it's based in ignorance. And it's based on the fact that, you know, you're still living under a regime that Christ has fulfilled, right? Mm. You're living under a, a, a moral and ceremonial and legalistic law that Christ has fulfilled, right? Because you read the book of Hebrews, it's very clear. Christ is now our Sabbath, which is why in Romans 14 and in 1 Corinthians 8 and, and throughout, oh, sorry, not 1 Corinthians 8, in Romans 14 and through Hebrews, the authors in Hebrew and Paul in in Romans are very clear that Christ is now our Sabbath and we have now a freedom in the way we worship. Mm. So we know the early church, they, they met and they united on the first day, right? Which is Sunday because it commemorated the day of the Lord's raising. But throughout Christian history and even in the early church to hide from persecution, they were meeting on many different days. There was no set day throughout the first few centuries, right? Um, so, so like in the book of Acts, they will meet daily. Daily, yeah. yeah. They'll meet yeah. daily. Um, on, the, on the first day, they would take a collection, you know, for yeah. those who were, who were sick. But, so we see the freedom acting out straight away. The point, of, the point of the matter was don't forsake the assembly. It wasn't when you should assemble. Right. That's a good point. Could you repeat that, please? So the, the point is the, the, the purpose of fellowship, the point of the ecclesia, the church, is not when you commit, congregate, it's that you congregate. That's the importance. Yeah. That you are supposed right. to assemble. And, and just for the people that think that um, it, they were like assemblies, mm. Right, like for example, local church, they might have like a, a, a prayer night on Wednesday yeah, yeah. or a Bible studies on Friday, but the main service is on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. They didn't have that in the early church. No, no. They were meeting every day and doing all yeah. of that. Yeah. They were meeting every day. They were under the apostolic teaching mm -hmm. as well as they were partaking of the communion. Yeah. So they were literally having a service every single day. The upper room was a service, you know. It was it yeah. was one of their comp. Yeah. And and you see the the Holy Spirit fall down. They were in prayer. They were you know fellowshipping with one another. They were encouraging. They were singing songs. You know. So these are things that that's what the church mm. is, right? And I think th there's a two thousand year old lesson that we're still not learning today. Mm. That Jesus said that. God created Sabbath for man and not, and not man for I was Sabbath. Reading, I was reading that yesterday yeah. um, in the book of Mark and the, the Mark chapter three. Yeah, Mark chapter three. I was reading Mark three and and Jesus' dialogue with the Pharisees and he's like, "Don't did, haven't you guys read what David did? Mm -hmm. Right on the day he violated he violated your command because man is Lord of the Sabbath. Right, yeah. that it was designed for men. It was it was." Initially, that Sabbath was so men could reflect on God. And now in Christ, we can always reflect on God, right? Yeah. We can always remember Him and we have our rest in Him. Yeah, that, that's the beauty. Because if you're going to look at Sabbath to be a burden upon yourself, then guess yeah. what? You, you have the view of you have been created for Sabbath. Yeah. But God has it the other way around, that yeah. God wants you not to be um, restricted or 
you know, um, whatever the case is that you're feeling, rather that he wants you to have rest in the Sabbath. And for us now, we're waiting for this um, eternal Sabbath mm. that we're going to have in God, which is what you were mentioning in the book of Hebrews, that we we have this day of rest, mm. right? Because um, what's his name? David was talking about there is a day of rest to come and this day of liberation that we have. Mm. And it's not something that we David had previously. It was something that he was waiting. He was looking forward he to. He was looking yeah. forward to. Yeah. Because so, they were they were under that law and they they were groaning kind of thing. Mm. They were groaning for this day of liberation, that freedom. And we get a small taste of it now in Christ and the Spirit, but it's coming, the fullness of it. So that's why right now, I think, you know, with these personal convictions and with these things and with this Christian liberty, God is preparing our hearts for that yeah. day of rest. He's preparing our hearts to enjoy the fullness of the glory of what Christ has done. Right. And it's coming. Yeah. In fullness. I, I do see, um, like for us, we're Australian. Mm. We don't see that much here. But I do see that being more in the American culture, mm. especially those who are connected to Israel. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Like yeah. They, they try to imitate the Jewish culture mm. as if somehow they are it's getting closer to God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's very dangerous because if you look at, um, I believe it's Colossians 3, mm. right, where Paul is speaking about that I am a Pharisee, I am a Jew, I am yeah, from yeah, the yeah. tribe of so Benjamin, yeah. baptized, uh, circumcised on the eighth day. He's saying, I count all that as Rubbish. dung, right? Uh, that's the actual the dung. language, Poop. right? Just for me to receive the knowledge of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And... Christians who are trying to desire so much to be like the Jewish people and you have a Jewish man saying, I count all that as dung yeah. just to know Jesus. That means we're heading the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Like we're heading in the wrong direction. Just the, bo- the book of Galatians, you're going back to your, like you foolish Galatians. Like yeah. you have been freed. You have been given the spirit. You have been given freedom all right, by the spirit. And now you're going back to the law, yeah, yeah, which is in opposition to everything that Christ died for. So, especially that circumcision, like you meet some Christians that they would circumcise their children, not just for say health, or health whatever. reasons, medical reasons, but just they feel like it's mm, more, it's more holy, it's it, more spiritual. It's yeah. the yeah. biblical thing to do. But yeah. then Paul saying. The person who's circumcised, let them be stay circumcised. Mm. Those who are not circumcised, let them stay uncircumcised. It's, it's interesting that they they bring these things because it talks about Abraham believing and it counting it to him as righteous, right? As righteousness, he wasn't circumcised at that time, yeah. you know. And you bring that up to a Jew, and Paul uses that as an argument as well. You bring it up to a Jew or these Christians who are in support of it, and they just they can't take it in. They, they, it's, they really resist it. Like I said, it's because of, they feel like this is their security because they don't want to violate God and they want to do things that they think is within God's limits. But God's yeah. like, you've, you've got freedom right? cool. in Christ. So. Well, we're coming to a close. Mm. Anything you want to tell the viewers? We, we focus on certain things, but you can extrapolate it to pretty much any personal conviction you have it. If you have a personal conviction, and I, I, I kind of wanted to hone in on this. If your personal conviction is not glorifying God in your life, then it's probably time for a change. Mm-hmm. Whether it is to have freedom or not. So like I know Christians who they lived in this freedom with alcohol, but it was leading them into bad places. Mm-hmm. So they had to reassess that and be like, it's not actually glorifying God in my life. So they pulled back. And then there are others who are on the other way in the in the other direction where it became a legalistic thing not to drink alcohol and it consumed their whole life and it also wasn't glorifying God, right? So my encouragement to you guys is if your personal conviction is not leading to God being glorified and it's not leading to you bearing fruits, it's time to reassess it and time to grow in the Lord. Um, and that you would look 
and you say, look, whether we eat or whether we drink, we do it to the glory of God. But also Paul says this thing in Romans 14 that the kingdom of God is not food and drink. It's righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit, right? And so we have to look at all these things through the lens of the kingdom. We are living for the kingdom. We are living for Christ. And sometimes we need to make certain sacrifices for that and in order for our brother or sister to grow. But it's all part and parcel of that discipleship and sanctification process. So let's, you know, let's have that mindset. Let's try to keep the unity as best as we can to have peace with all men, not to have a divisive spirit about these things, but to seek to learn and, and grow. Yeah. yeah, that's a big blessing, man. Um, and I think it's all in the actual term, right? Personal, Personal conviction. conviction. Yeah. So that means it's just a conviction that you're going through, that you're dealing with. I just encourage you not to burden someone else with mm -hmm. it. Uh, and also, to be honest with you, it'd be much better if you understand your liberty in Christ. Yeah. That way you can enjoy what God has permitted you to do. Um, when it comes to morality, we know our boundaries. But then if there is something that is, uh, there's no boundaries, that God has not put any boundaries, why should we place our boundaries yeah. on ourselves, right? It's basically opening up the jail cell and saying, you're free to go. But then you're like, well, this is my comfort place. Yeah. I've been in this jail cell for a very long time, and I'm happy to stay here. Yeah. Anyways, God bless you. We'll see you next time. God bless Take you care. Guys.